All right, so today we're going to talk about having one versus multiple vaults in your Obsidian workflow. For many people, this is a no-brainer of a question. One brain, one vault, right? Well, sort of. There are great points to make in favor and against this. So in this video, I'm going to go over why you might want to stick with one vault, as well as why you might want to have two or more vaults to work with in your Obsidian. Before we start, as always, I'll be giving you my own personal opinion, but if there's any software out there that you should have completely tailored to yourself and your needs, it's Obsidian. The goal of this video is not to tell you how you should manage your vault, but rather to have a discussion as to why different workflows might benefit from having more than one vault. Definitely let me know in the comment section below how many vaults you have and why, because I would love to hear it. So let's begin. Okay, so let's start with the benefits of having a single vault. And the first argument is one you might have heard of already, and that one is one brain, one vault, right? Most of us see Obsidian as our second brain, so it makes sense that we have only one vault, because obviously, in real life, our brain makes connections to every segment of our lives, so why shouldn't our vault be the same way? This is a fair argument, but as you're about to see, it's a bit more nuanced than that. One of the major complaints of those that have one big vault is navigating the graph view. Now, in my past video, I went over plenty of stuff on how to better use the graph view. But there's one thing I didn't mention because it's something I don't use myself, but I know many of you will appreciate, and that is opening the graph view as a folder. And I don't mean using the graph filters, I mean opening up one single folder as a vault. So just to give you guys an example, let's come over here, create a folder, just name it whatever. And I'm going to be putting in all of our biology notes inside that same folder, just by dragging and dropping it in there. And now if we come over here to open another vault and I go ahead and press open folder as a vault. So you can see we're now inside the mastering obsidian directory. And if we sort this by kind so we can see all the folders, you can see here we have our example folder that we just created. So when we open it, you can see that now we have our entire vault as just the biology notes. So obviously this is quite small, it doesn't really matter, but it's just to show you guys how it works. You can probably see why this is so useful. If you have, say, a Zettelkasten folder that has no links between your other nodes, you can simply use this and open your Zettelkasten folder as a vault, which will allow you to better visualize your Zettelkasten with zero distractions and potentially help you make better connections in the process. Not to mention, if your vault is really, really large and it's starting to slow down your Obsidian experience, this is a great way to free up system resources and make your Obsidian experience a lot more responsive. Another argument in favor of having only one vault is that you won't have to switch around between your vaults all the time. If you want to reference something between two different nodes, no matter how different they may be, you can simply do it. Because if you have two or more vaults, there's no way to link in between them. But one way around this is to make a link saying something on the lines of double brackets vault one forward slash a note name so that when you're going over that note, you can manually bring up your other vault and head over to that section. Another argument is that managing two or more vaults can get tedious, especially if you rely on a bunch of plugins and custom CSS. Having to frequently switch between vaults every single day all the time can get frustrating really quickly. All right, so now let's move on to the reasons why you might wanna have two or more vaults. And there's actually a good amount of arguments in favor of this approach. If you follow a rigid system such as a Zettelkasten, it is very likely that your Zettelkasten notes will not be linking to the rest of your vault. If you only use one vault and you have your many MOCs as well as your journal projects and all of that on your Obsidian as well as your Zettelkasten, it is very likely that when you open up the graph view, you're going to have a large concentration of notes in your graph that don't link to anything outside of it. And it's likely that that large concentration will be your Zettelkasten. So for the majority of people, their Zettelkasten does not benefit from being in their main vault since there's no connections being made outside of it. And therefore, many people have a vault dedicated to the Zettelkasten. On the same note, let's say you're a programmer. If you're writing code, you likely won't want to reference a Zettelkasten or your mindfulness journal. So many people have a separate vault for that or other work-related topics, so long as there's little to no chance that they might end up having to link to something in their main vault. Another benefit is the responsiveness of the UI, and this is especially true if you have a very large vault. If you have a 10 gig plus vault with multiple thousands of nodes, it's only normal that your vault becomes less and less responsive. So by separating into two or more vaults, you're obviously gonna have a big performance boost. Another reason is if you're a student. Now I'll be making a video dedicated to Obsidian for students in the future, but in this case, what I wanna say is that you can have each subject have its own vault, unless it's classes with continuity. In that case, you would most likely want to have them in the same vault, since those links would be useful to have. For instance, many majors have classes 
that are essentially a more advanced version of a previous class, such as Calculus 1 and 2. And in that case, it makes sense to have both of those classes in the same vault. Another really good use case, and something that I rarely see mentioned, is if you have a shared vault. Maybe you share it with a like-minded individual that has similar interests, and you both expand each other's knowledge by sharing a vault. Maybe you share a vault with your team for work. I don't often see this use case mentioned, but it's definitely a very interesting one and certainly a great use case for a dedicated vault. Lastly, another great use case is for writers. This is especially true for fiction writers, as that's a genre that will have a lot of connections between different characters, and it's a complete game changer to have a single vault for them. This becomes exponentially more beneficial for writers that write massive fiction stories, sometimes consisting of dozens of books of the same story. All right, so now let's move on to my use cases. And I actually have three different Obsidian vaults, but it wasn't always like this. For the first six or nine months of using Obsidian, I was perfectly happy with only one vault, but eventually my needs changed and I'll go over the switch and why it makes sense for my workflow. So obviously I have my main vault and this is where I journal, where I curate content from around the web in various different sources. It's also where I have my maps of content. Basically everything I've been going over in the Mastering Obsidian series is what I have on my main vault. It's the one vault I open every single day and it's also the biggest one. Next, I have a vault dedicated to my Zettelkasten. Like I said in the previous sections of this video, most Zettelkastens do not link to the rest of your vault. For a very long time, I kept it on my main vault and it was fine for the most part. But then as my Zettelkasten inevitably grew, I just ended up with a massive chunk of my graph showing my Zettelkasten nodes that made no connections towards the rest of my vault. And I also noticed that my main vault was becoming slightly less responsive simply because I had to load my entire Zettelkasten, which was slightly slowing down my system. Now, I could have gone with the method that I showed you earlier and simply opened my Zettelkasten folder as a vault to get around this, but the problem with doing that was that it was the exact same amount of friction as opening up a new vault. And lastly, there's the topic of the UI or user experience. There are a lot of plugins that I don't need to have on my Zettelkasten vault, which are creating distractions. Also, on my Zettelkasten vault, I want to have different elements displayed. For instance, I don't care to see the calendar on the bottom right and would rather give my local graph view a lot more screen real estate. It's nice to have these small details of personalization based on what it is that I'm working on at a given moment. And although I currently use the same theme for all my vaults, I'm looking at changing that in the near future, including custom CSS, and it's good to know that I have the ability to do so if I so choose. And my third one is my programming slash work vault. This is a recent one and it happened late last year because I noticed that my programming mock was the only mock that had zero connections to the rest of my vault. While at the same time, it had a bunch of connections inside of it as a lot of these languages overlap and I would use parts of code from one project to another and have a very large amount of links going from one place to the other inside the programming mock. And with all of these factors, especially the excessive amount of linking going on in that mock, it simply made sense to upgrade it to its own vault. So those are my three vaults, but there's something else that I don't yet have, but I'm looking to implement in the near future, and that is having a shared vault. I first heard of this by a colleague of mine that shares a vault with two of his friends in his workspace that have very similar interests and essentially build a vault together. This is a fantastic and groundbreaking way of sharing and therefore expanding your own knowledge. And as the old saying goes, two heads are better than one. Having said all of this, and even though there are certainly good use cases to having multiple vaults, there is nothing that truly stops you from using a single main vault. For instance, if you want to have a shared vault with someone else, you don't necessarily have to make a brand new vault from scratch. You can simply make a folder on your vault and make only that folder as shared. Let's say you have your vault on a cloud provider like Dropbox or Google Drive you can give access to a specific folder inside your vault to someone else that you want to share it with. Do you want to have a vault for Zettelkasten or want to write a book or another for a school project? You can do all of this in folders and open each folder as its own vault like I showed you earlier. You can even have a dedicated shared folder inside of your vault that you treat as a separate vault. And you can share that folder with whoever you want. For instance, you can share that with friends taking the same class so you can all contribute to one single vault pertaining to your class. And if you're a college student and you're watching this video, I hope you know how lucky you are. Many people, myself included, would have loved to have access to something even remotely as powerful as Obsidian back in our school days. So as you can see, almost all arguments in favor of multiple vaults have a workaround. The only argument that you can yet have a workaround for is a custom CSS and UI layout. 
You can't just click a button on your vault and have your vault change the user interface and CSS code based on your specific needs. But just because there's a workaround doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't a better experience to have dedicated vaults for your diverse needs, so long as these needs have no need to connect to the rest of your vault. This becomes especially true the bigger your vault gets. So you really need to look at your particular needs and vault size to see if it makes sense to expand or not. As for my recommendation, I strongly recommend starting with only one vault and only create extras if you identify a true need. There's loads of people that expand to two, three, four, or even five vaults only to downgrade back to one very shortly after, which is not a pleasant experience. Before you go, let me know in the comments if you have more than one vault and if you do, what your use cases are. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.